by the Bible. You live by the word of God. The word of God has a way of giving you compass to navigate your way. If you want the knowledge of God in your life, if you want to increase and grow and multiply the knowledge of God's word in your life, spend time in his word. Worship the key all glorious above. Oh, great policy, his power and his love. Oh, she
I don't want you to expect the place I worship to be the way it used to be. We are looking, we are standing before the throne of grace this morning. And we are joining the angels to worship our Father. Because He deserves it. Praise Him, praise Him. Lift up your hands and bless the Lord. We lift up your hands and worship the Lord. We come at the dance upon the kid. We can set the other body. Shabbat shalom. Ikata shabbat Yeah. <laughs> 
bondage. The ancient bondage. Long standing grip of Satan. See, I have come this morning to break in pieces the ancient bondage. For I am the ancient of the day. This is the word of the Lord this morning. Lord, we reverence you this morning. We give you the worship. We glorify your name. Beside you, we declare this morning that there is no other God. You are the only God. You are the Almighty. And we enthrone you in the service this morning. Jesus, glorify your name here. Blessed be the name of the Lord. For Jesus' precious name, we have worship. Jesus' precious name, we have worship. Before you take your seat this morning, I'd like us to pray just a prayer point this morning for as many that are going through pains in their body, that are going through one sickness or the other. I like to lift up our voice this morning that the balm in Gilead will bring about healing upon everyone this morning. Lift up your voice and intercede this morning. Wherever they are, maybe as at this moment they are in um, their hospital bed, I like us to pray supernatural healing this morning. Members, as of his presence, everyone around our life, our relations, let's just pray that the hand of the Lord, even across the city, suffering from one disease or the other as a result of the pandemic, I like us to pray that the bam in Gilead will reach out unto them supernatural healing this morning. The healing hand of God will break forth upon their lives and give them testimony this morning. Yes, there is no distance in the realm of the spirit. I like you to pray this morning that, that the healing, healing hand of God will be stretched forth to them this morning. That the Lord will heal this morning. The Lord will heal. The Lord will break the ancient bondage causing sickness this morning. Our God answers prayers. Yes. Glory to your name, Almighty. In Jesus' precious name, we are praying. In Jesus' precious name, we pray. Glory to the Lord. Glory to the Lord. Please, you may take your seat in God's presence this, this morning. You are welcome to the first service. This is Kingdom Life Service, the first service. You are very much welcome this, this morning. I'd like you to just get your heart prepared wherever you are, whether you are, you are watching online, wherever you are, there is no distance in the realm of the, the Spirit. The Spirit of the Lord will reach out unto you today in the name of the Lord Jesus. Open your heart. You will not go the same way you had stepped into the presence of God this morning in the name of the Lord Jesus. Please, let's welcome the new wine as the minister to us this, this morning. Hallelujah. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. He's a great and mighty God. Faithful is his name. And we're to, here today to so just give him glory, give him praise. Hallelujah. Hey. Power in. 
your hand, Jehovah, and all creation will proclaim your majesty. The nations bow before your throne, proclaiming you reign, you reign. Your nations bow before your throne, declaring you reign, you reign. I am Kele, O Pironye di Kabi. I am Kele, O Pironye di Kachuku.
Mema, oh Mema. If you know he's a good God, say, oh Mema. partakers of the divine nature partakers of the heavenly calling for making us partakers of his holiness let's worship the king this morning ascribe greatness to our God young, old, male, female let's worship the king creation will bow down at his feet he has redeemed us out of every tribe and tongue and people and nations and made us unto himself kings and priests and we shall reign on the earth let's worship the king worship the lamb of God that was slain he deserves our worship Deserves a praise. Let all that is within me praise His holy name. Let all that is within me worship the Lamb of God. Oh, he is worthy to receive all the worship. Let all that is within me worship the King. We worship the Lamb. of life you are worthy to receive all our praise Lord we worship you this morning for who you are and for all that you do we worship you this morning we give you glory we honor you Worship the King, for you alone are worthy. Uh, Lord, we worship you today. All of creation worships the King. <laughs> the 24 elders bow before the throne. We worship you, Lamb of God. We worship you, Ancient of Days. Father in heaven, how we love you. We lift your name in all the earth.
We're still looking into the subject of Christ's image. Every partaker of the divine nature should be a carrier of Christ's image. And carrying Christ's image is a product of revelation. That we all will open face beholding as in a mirror the glory of the Lord. We are being changed into his likeness from glory to glory. As we behold the glory of the Lord in a mirror, we are being changed into his likeness. Even by the spirit of the Lord and that happens from glory to glory. Christ will establish to us is Son of God, Christ is Savior, Christ is Lord, Christ is the light of the world, Christ is the way, the truth, the life, Christ is the accurate representation of the Father here on earth. The manner of life he lived, the way he conducted himself so high yet made a choice to make himself of no reputation. And he did these things to be a standard bearer for us. He said that he may become the firstborn amongst many brethren. We are not Christians just because we attend church. We are not Christians just because he saved us. There are many who are saved. Jesus is Savior, but Jesus is not Lord. We become Christians when he is son of God to us, when he is savior to us, when he is Lord over us, and when he becomes the accurate representation of the Father in every facet of our lives. And we need to re reiterate this again and again so that it sinks into the right place in our hearts. When we come to a revelation of who Christ is, it is not the revelation of Jesus is not for impression the revelation of jesus in our hearts is not for admiration or called people admire jesus uh, the unsaved admire jesus they admire his prowess his miracle working power but they have not come to appropriate him as savior appropriate him as lord appropriate him as the soon coming king appropriate him as the standard bearer of the values of heaven and the virtues of heaven. And if you are going to really be a Christian, the revelation of Jesus should produce corresponding action in our lives. Irrespective of who you are, irrespective of your level of life, every measure of revelation measured out to us is to produce conviction and conversion. Every measure of revelation is to produce conviction and response to conviction which produces transformation. We are being changed. We are being changed. We are being changed. You see in 2 Corinthians chapter 3 from verse 17 to verse 18, we are being changed into his likeness, the very image of the Father, invisible, tangible so I'm challenging the thinking, I'm challenging the orientation of every single one of us here present this morning and as many as are connected to us on live streaming. This revelation of Jesus being brought to you over the time, over the months, over the years, what is it producing in us? 
He wrote to the Colossian Christians, Paul, the beloved apostle. He said, Christ in you, the hope of glory. Christ in you, the hope of glory. There is a measure of God that should be unveiled in our lives as we respond to the revelation of Jesus. The revelation of Jesus is not to impress, is not to generate admiration. It is to produce corresponding action. And so knowing that Jesus is the Son, Jesus is the Lord, Jesus is the light of the world, Jesus is the way, the truth, and the life, what has it produced in our life? As a housewife, what has the revelation of Jesus produced in your life? As a widow, what has the revelation of Jesus produced in your life? As a teenager, what has the revelation of, what conviction, what measure of conviction, what corresponding action has the revelation of Jesus produced in our life? And so we started to bring to attention that when we receive Jesus, and we receive his revelation as Lord, as Savior, as the Son of God, as the light of the world. It requires response. And a principal response the revelation Jesus should produce in our lives is that it brings us into a place where we are willing, by choice, we are willing intentionally to put on the same Christ. So that when God looks at us, it does not see Tunji, it does not see Mopolu Asho, it does not see James, it does not see Green. He sees a measure of his son in us. And not just a measure that is retained day by day, but a measure that is progressing, a measure that is developing. We are being changed, present continuous. We are being changed into his likeness till we all come in the fullness of the stature of the Son of God unto a perfect man. So Christianity is not just church attendance or Bible courage or speaking in tongues. It should be producing progressively the measure of the Son, the image of the Son in us. Are you still in here this morning? So this is a challenge to every one of us. This is a responsibility. We are calling every one of us. Jesus said, you cannot truly really be my disciple unless you forsake yourself, you carry your cross daily and follow me. And what's the essence of carrying the cross daily? The symbol of crucifixion, the symbol of eternal sacrifice, the symbol of death to self, death to the world. And Paul wrote in Galatians chapter 6, he said, I am crucified to the world, and the world is crucified to me. The values of the world, the systems of the world, the desires of the world. When I embrace Jesus, embrace this cross, and chose to follow him daily, I am crucified to the system of the world, the ways of the world, the allure of the world, the transient powers of the world. They are crucified to me. That is Christianity. And the challenge here to us this morning is that since we met the Lord, what has the revelation of Jesus produced in our lives? And we, and we shared with us amongst other things, like we, we, with the actors in putting on Christ, you see actors putting on the personality of a person for a transient period in acting, in taking the form of another person, the person they act, they take up the form for a moment and they're also able to take off the form in another moment but jesus also we put on we take on when we receive jesus but unlike the actors in nollywood and bollywood and hollywood who are able to take it off again and try to recover their original selves in this kingdom there is no recovery there must be permanence about this change the fullness of the Son of God may not emerge the day we get saved, but we are pressing into that dimension from glory to glory, even by the Spirit of the Lord. And we challenge us. Human effort does not bring us into the fullness of Christ. A human determination is not enough to come into the fullness of the image of the Son of God. So we all need help. And even God knows we need help. 
And that's why the Holy Spirit is sent. You've seen signs, you've walked in my power, you've seen, produced miracles, you've cast out demons, but tarry in Jerusalem until you are endued with power from on high. He said, and after you have received power, you shall be witnesses of me in Jerusalem, in Judea, in Samaria, even to the uttermost parts of the earth. Every Christian should be a witness of his resurrection. Every Christian should be one who has put on Jesus and the measure of Jesus is increasing in our lives regularly. I can't go back, won't go back to the way it used to be before your presence came and changed. It is a permanent change. It should be a permanent change. You don't take up Jesus for Sunday service and go back to your old wild ways after service. It should be a permanent putting on, a permanent change. Before service, during service, after service, putting on of Jesus should be a permanent feature in the life of the Christian. Whether you are found on the bus stop, you are found in traffic, you are found in the marketplace, you are found in your bathroom, you are using public restroom. You use public restroom the same way you use your private restroom in your private bedroom. You don't say because this is public, you use it anyhow. Otherwise, probably you are not putting on Christ. Probably Christ for you is a Sunday, Sunday thing. The moment you share the grace, you put off Christ and go back to Mufoluasho, go back to Olatunji. But if you are truly a Christian, putting on the image of Christ should be with permanence. Let me turn someone close to you and say permanence. I've been advised to, 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 to keep my boundary around here. My, my wife is already eyeing me. This man, I hope you are not going to come down again here. I want to eat lunch today. Oh. All right. So actors do it for a moment, momentarily. Christians do it for life, for a living. I will share with us what we have to do. I'm just making a recap of things we shared over the last two, three weeks. What we have to do, Christianity, putting on Christ, should affect our thinking, our reasoning, our mentality, our mental disposition to life. If you have received Jesus as Lord, as Savior, as King, as the light of the world, as the standard of God on earth, it should affect your mentality. Don't be conformed to the world. Don't be conformed to the values of the world. Yes, the world educates us. Yes, the world clothes us. Yes, the world uh, uh, provides food for us. But don't allow the underlying influences of the world that takes people away from the Lord to shape your life and shape your thinking as a Christian. Don't be conformed to the world, but be ye transformed by the renewing of your mind that you may prove or test the good will of God. And the perfect will of God. And the acceptable will of God. So your thinking must change. If you're a Christian musician, your thinking about music must change. If you're a Christian politician, the proof that you're really a Christian as a politician is that your mentality about politics, whether in Nigeria or in America, must change. If you're a driver, if you're an artisan, if you're a plumber, if you're an engineer, you're a doctor, you're a lawyer, and you are a Christian, thank God for the scholarship that made you those things, but there are underlying values that must show that this is a Christian. This is a career of the Son of God. This one has put on with permanence the image of the living God. Are you still in here this morning? But I want to emphasize something here this morning before I step down. So Christianity, putting on the image of Christ, should affect, I told us about actors and actresses, some of them spend one year to master the script, to learn the script, to master the persona, the psyche, the mentality of the personality they want to act in a film. They spend one year to take up that form. They may spend another three months to recover the original form. But for us, there is no recovery. Christianity is a putting on that should be without recovery. But then we are saying, you as a Christian, in Putting on Jesus, it must affect your thinking. The way you reason, the way you function, your productivity. 
Christianity, putting on the image of Christ means your, your mentality is affected. Let this mind be in you as it was in Christ Jesus. I mean, as it was in Christ Jesus. In the class of God, yet he made himself of no reputation. Somebody say no reputation. Say it again, no reputation. And how Christians of today, especially Christians in Africa and Christians in Nigeria, how we need to learn this virtue of the law making ourselves of no reputation christian billionaire and yet making yourself of no reputation christian scholar and yet making yourself of no reputation christian um, um, famous um, um, christian whatever your field and yet making yourself of no reputation why jesus god in the class of god as the very son of god yet he did not contend for that he stripped himself of the benefits he stripped himself of the authority. He stripped himself of every form of divinity as an example to us. Let this mind be in you as it was in Christ Jesus, though in the class of God, did not count it robbery, did not count it something to be clinged onto, to be equal to God, but he made himself of no reputation. How pastors need to make ourselves of no reputation. How general overseers, we need to make ourselves of no reputation. How pastors' wives, we need to make ourselves of no reputation. How Christians with wealth, Christians with fame, Christians with political might, we need to make ourselves of no reputation if indeed we are put on Jesus. And not just making ourselves of no reputation look at the things he subjected himself to these are the responses god is looking for in our lives that we endure what he endured christianity is not just the glees showmanship effigy everywhere christianity is far beyond that christianity even rarely grows makes advances just by reason of the glees and glamour Go and study the history of Christianity. Go and study church history. And study the movement of the church, even from the day of the apostles. Tangible progress was not in the environment of celebrity. It was in the environment of challenges. It was in the environment of persecution. It was in the environment of sufferings. And we have a generation, we don't even want to touch anything like discomfort with the longest pole. We are simply saying, Christianity cannot grow, cannot move forward under my watch. Some of us find it difficult just to preach, Jesus loves you. Just to carry your Bible and go to a neighbor, go to a friend, go to the next house and tell them about the love of Jesus, about the price he paid for every one of us to redeem us. Christianity will not grow, cannot grow by a fizzy. We may see much, but it may add to little before the throne of God. And so you will see here, though in the class of god he made himself of no reputation he made himself of no reputation he took the form of a man some translation says he took the form of a born slave he was humbled even unto the most humiliating form of death the death on the cross what are we saying to us here this morning the need that as a christian in this generation if you will stand out not necessarily before men not honestly before the television cameras or before press men, if you are going to stand out before the throne of God, if you are going to stand out before the cloud of witnesses, according to Hebrews chapter 12, from verse 1, if we are going to stand out, we must be ready to endure what he endured. What does the scripture say? Hebrews chapter 12, let's see this together quickly. Hebrews chapter 12, from verse 1. Therefore, we also, since we are surrounded, somebody say, I am surrounded. You better speak like a believer this morning, say, I am surrounded. Therefore, we also, since we are surrounded by so great a cloud of witnesses, not the witnesses of press men on us, but the witnesses of Hebrews chapter 11. People have to go through challenges. People have to go through trials. People have to be forsaken. People who are abandoned. People who are persecuted, people who are challenged in health, challenged for fruits of the womb, challenged by um, authorities of the day, yet they came out triumphant. Those are the witnesses we are surrounded with. Seeing that we are um, surrounded with such a great company 
of witnesses, a great cloud of witnesses, let us lay aside. This is like stripping ourselves again. This is like making ourselves of no reputation again. This is like setting aside anything that can disrupt our momentum, our movement and progress into the fullness of the stature of the Son of God. He said, and let us lay aside every weight, encumbrances, distractions, things that slow us down, things that hinder our free movement, spiritual obesity, spiritual overweight, spiritual, and spiritual struggles, things that make us not to be able to move with the accuracy and the authority God has placed upon us as carriers of Christ. Let us lay aside every weight and the sin which so easily ensnares us. He said, and let us with endurance, let us run with endurance the race that is set before us. Verse 2, looking unto Jesus, our example, and taking our, our examples, our motivation from Jesus, looking unto Jesus, the author and finisher of our faith, who for the joy that was set before him endured the cross. Look at what he had to endure. He endured the cross, the pain of the cross, the sacrifice of the cross, the death on the cross. He endured the cross. And also despising the shame and has sat down at the right hand of the throne of God. And my closing submission is this. First Peter chapter 3. By challenging us here again this morning, Christian, believer in Jesus, endure what Jesus endured. The Christian pilgrimage, the Christian journey, the Christian life is not just the easy, I do what I like, I want what I want. If you don't give me what I want, I discard the whole thing, I do my own thing, I am my own man, I'm not under anybody's authority. Actually, the measure of your authority in the kingdom is the measure of your submission to authority. I say that again. Your measure of authority in the kingdom is the measure of your submission to authority. Jesus was the anointed one. Jesus was the Messiah. Jesus was the one introduced as the anointed one of God. And yet John the Baptist came to him and Jesus came to John the Baptist at the rivers of Jordan in Matthew chapter 3, you read from verse 16 to verse 18. And when Jesus got there, I'm praying according to Luke 3, 21, the Bible makes us to understand when John saw him, he saw him by revelation. John chapter 1 from verse 29 to verse 33. He said, I never knew him, but the same who sent me to baptize says, on whosoever I see the Spirit descending and remaining, the same is he who baptizes in the Holy Spirit. He said, and this is he. And I testify that this is the Lamb of God that was slain for the sins of the world. But you know what? When he saw Jesus, he said, I need to be baptized of you. Jesus said, no. Allow it to be so for now that the Son of Man may fulfill all righteousness. It was simply saying, I want the authority. I want the fullness of the authority. I need to function as a Messiah. And to come to that authority, I need to submit to this process. And that's why I uh, emphasized from a week ago, we have Christians who want Jesus as Son of God, who want Jesus as the way, the truth, and the life, who want Jesus as Savior. But who don't want Jesus as Lord? Lord means master. Lord means in control. Lord means in charge. And the question is, is Jesus really in charge of your life? Is Jesus really in charge of my thoughts? Does Jesus have the final say, the final authority on my finances, on my marriage, on my disposition to my wife, on my disposition to authorities? Does Jesus have the final say? And so you see here, he said, for the joy that was set before him, he endured the cross. If I may ask in closing this morning, what are you enduring for the Lord? What are you having to go through to put yourself under, standing under duress, standing under persecution, standing under unpalatable circumstances because Jesus is involved? First Peter chapter 3, a long one here, and I close from verse 13. I read from the New Living Translation. Now who will want to harm you if you are eager to do good? 
or even if you suffer for doing what is right and many of us we only want to suffer if we are wrong and we are being punished for the wrong that we have done but look at Christianity here look at what it takes to put on Jesus here look at the demand of the kingdom over every one of us here now who uh, who will want to harm you if you are eager to do good but even if you suffer for doing what is right God somebody say God say it louder this morning say God he says God will reward you for it reward you for what for suffering unjustly <laughs> for being abused because you're a Christian for being subjected to ridicule you have alternatives but you chose the way of the cross you know you I mean they came to Jesus they wanted to arrest him he said we seek Jesus he said it is I the power of that pronouncement pushed his adversaries back and made them to fall under power and then he gave them a condition do not touch of any of these my disciples you came for me you can take me and on that condition they were able to arrest him in Peter's zeal brought out the sword cut off one of the ears I'm sure I was going for the head but as a master fisherman maybe he was not too precise with the sword he got the air and to show the might and the means and authority in him he took the lobe and put it back and it was like nothing ever happened yet he submitted himself to that process he suffered for doing good he went to the cross not for his sins but for my sins maybe you are above sin he went to the cross for my sin friends sometimes I'm talking with my wife and I say hey, you this woman you will not kill me the kind of death you, you, you subjected Jesus to you will not kill me in this house this bill come out he's waiting for you that bill is waiting for you that thing to fix is waiting for you he, he, I don't want to die like Jesus died of this woman <laughs> what am I saying to us here he said God will reward you for it if you suffer for doing good does that sound like modern contemporary Christianity does that sound like Christianity 2020 or does that sound like something for the bush in the wilderness somewhere where there's no civilization well, that's our call this is the demand of heaven upon us I'm out treating my time now listen to this and if someone I mean if someone ask about sorry I'm jumping he said so don't worry to be af or be afraid of their threats instead you must worship Christ as Lord of your life master in charge of your life and if someone asks about your hope as a believer always be ready to explain it and explain it how he said but do it in a gentle and respectful way we as we see Christians who are who are braggadocious who are boastful who are too full of themselves making no room for Jesus he said in explaining your Christian hope your Christian faith do it in a respectful and gentle manner he said but do this in a gentle and respectful way keep your conscience clear then if people speak against you they will be ashamed when they see what a good life you live because you belong to Christ remember it is better to suffer for doing good see that on the score again it is better to suffer for doing good if that is what God wants than to suffer for doing wrong Christ suffered for our sins once for all time he never sinned but he died for sinners to bring you safely home to God he suffered let me leave it here study the whole of this flow get on to chapter 4 and verse 5 study several translations study this new living translation first Peter chapter 3 from verse 3 and 13 to chapter 4 and verse 5 the submission here is don't suffer for evil don't suffer for what you deserve even where you don't deserve it looking unto Jesus be willing to endure what he endured he came to his own his own did not believe in him he came to the world he created the world did not know him John chapter 1 you read from verse 9 to verse 11 he made the world he created the world he came to his own his own did not know him he came to his people his people rejected him he did not make an issue of it he did not call down fire upon them he did not say don't you do you know who i am do you know who you are talking to the christian puts on jesus 
think like he thinks. Endures what he endures. Welcome to the Christian culture. Welcome to the Christian life. Welcome to the higher life. It looks stupid to the world, but it's the very leverage into the higher graces and authority of the kingdom. For this he said, because he humbled himself even to the death of the cross, therefore, somebody say therefore, say it again, therefore, Philippians chapter 2 verse 9, God had also highly exalted him. You want exaltation? The way up in the kingdom is down. Before honor is humility. Pride goes before destruction. But before honor is humility. Let's take about this one. And consider what I say. And like Paul wrote to Timothy, may God give you understanding in these things. Consider what I say. May the Lord grant you understanding in these things. On Christ the solely rock I stand. All of the ground is sinking sand. All of the ground. ground of scholarship cannot handle demons. The ground of natural beauty cannot stand before your maker. Cannot make you stand before your maker. The ground of natural qualifications and earthly accumulations, acquisitions. They become sinking sand before the throne of the almighty. On Christ, the solid rock, I stand. My prayer for someone here this morning is that may the authentic Christ be found in us. Paul wrote to the church at Colossae, he said, Christ in you, the hope of glory. He wrote to the Philippians, in Philippian church, he said he's the one at work in you, both to will and to perform of his good pleasure. Lord, we pray to you this morning. Lord, we call on you this morning. From all walks of life, from various tribes and tongues, and various levels of life, social levels, marital levels, age grade levels, we look to you this morning. That you will come and have mercy upon us. We break the yoke of the world. We break the grip of darkness. We break the vices of this life trying to entangle us and keep us away from the majesty of your son unveiled in our lives. We pray that, Lord, the co and codes of the flesh be cracked and life in the spirit be embraced. New way of living, new life in Christ, that we all may put on Jesus. And watching on live streaming, that we all may put on Jesus. He is the fullness of all things. He is the perfection of the Father here on earth. He is the visible form of the invisible God. Lord, walk in us. Lord, plant your son in us. Lord, form the image of your son in us. Lord, enable us to put on Jesus. Lord, walk Christ in us, the hope of glory. Lord, keep walking in us to will and to do of your good pleasure. That when we see you, we might be like your son Jesus. He said we do not know him, but whenever we see him, we shall be like him. We don't know whatever form he will take, whatever form he will be. But one thing is clear, if we surrender to him and to the revelation of his word, when we see him, we shall be like him. May we see Jesus. May we see Jesus. May people who see us find Jesus. May people who hear us hear Jesus. May people who know us know Jesus. In the precious name of Jesus. We thank you, Father. 
we bless your name because we prayed in Jesus name before I take my seat here this morning probably there's someone here maybe on live streaming maybe watching on any of the platforms of live streaming for these internationals of his presence maybe here in this physical and gathering maybe there's someone here saying I have been hanging around but I want the real thing today I want to be born again you are saying Jesus come into my life today take me as I am and make me to become what you created me to be if you are such a person in this gathering lift up your right hand wherever you are on live streaming put your right hand on your chest wherever you are we'll pray for you and your life will never be the same father thank you for the entrance of your word i thank you for the revelation of jesus as savior as lord as the light of the world in groping in darkness as the sun coming in lord we pray for lives wherever they are we break the power of sin we break the pattern of sin we break the system of the world and we turn loose the revelation of jesus to accompany to encompass and to be implanted in the lives of all these hearers we thank you father because we prayed in jesus name Hallelujah. Amen. I'd like us to open our Bibles quickly to 2 Corinthians chapter 9. From verse 6. Remember this, a farmer who plants only a few seeds. I'm, living, I'm reading with the NLT version. Few seeds will get a small crop. But the one who plants generously will get a generous club, crop. You must each decide in your heart how much to give. And don't give reluctantly or in response to pressure. For God loves a person who gives cheerfully. And God will generously provide all you need. Then you will always have everything you need and plenty left over to share with others. Hallelujah. We want to honor the Lord with our substance and our tithe and offering. Remember the key is you give cheerfully what you have decided in your heart. You don't give because of pressure. Someone pressured you to give something, but you are giving because you have decided this is what I want to use to honor God. Hallelujah. Amen. So let's take our offerings. Let's pray. Father, we'll thank you for yet another privilege, Lord, to give to you. We ask, Lord, that you accept our offerings, accept our persons, and Lord, let the blessing of obedience follow each and every one of us. In the name of Jesus, amen. Hallelujah. As we're giving our offerings and tithe, let's listen to the following announcement. This Wednesday, our discovery service holds 2nd of September by 6 p.m. Remember, it's via online. So join us, link us up through Facebook, YouTube, or through our website, 6 p.m. But maybe if you're on the road and you're passing through this place, you can see come around for service if you cannot get home before you watch. The duty pastor for this week is Pastor Clinton Maxine, myself. So kindly notify me of any special number, testimony, announcement in due time. Also remember, Prevailer's Place holds on Saturday morning by 6.30 in the morning via Zoom. Via Zoom, so try to connect by 6.30 a.m. till 7.30 a.m. Pastor will be meeting with uh, any youth or teenager that is interested in sound engineering. You want to learn sound engineering a teenager you're a youth maybe if if you're not done too but you have passion for it you can meet with pastor after the second service there will be holy communion service next week sunday the 6th of september so for those of us who come to service it, the items will be provided for us but those of us who are watching online please prepare your bread and 
and wine for the communion service. And also, Pastor will be meeting with uh, the following persons after the second service. Brother Saro Bright, Brother Onyeka Chiedu, Sister Ebifa Efrebo, Sister Doris Jeffa, Brother Voke, Brother Makele Etiti. So please, after the second service, these persons that their names were mentioned should please wait and see with Sino Pastor. Hallelujah. We want to specially welcome some special person that means or worship with us for the very first time. If today be of, happens to be the very first time you're worshiping on Sunday morning like this, can we see with your hands? Anyone? Hallelujah. Amen. I'd like to encourage us. Let's not forget to invite someone and God bless us in Jesus' name. Let's welcome our pastor. Praise the Lord. Do we have any youngster in the house, maybe a teenager, early 20s, you want to learn sound engineering? We have a training that is coming up. Do we have some people in the house in this service? None. Beautiful. Um, we also challenge those in the house. This announcement has been coming up uh, from time to time since May. We said as a church, we want to support the indigent in the city. I remember we started taking this series, I mean, this um, announcement since the um, series on empowerment, especially financial empowerment. We took, those, uh, we took the series in May and June. And then, um, in the period, we also asked that we'd like to support. We are aware that people have responded, but to my knowledge, as I um, a few days ago, I'm aware that in the church we have 11 responses um, towards this indigent support. We want to appeal towards the members of the church, adults in the house. Let us reach out. We, we have a pool. We have people who will help us to coordinate the disbursement. We have four categories of outreaches we are planning to conduct in the course of September as a means of also reaching out to the indigent amongst us. We want to reach out to widows in the Elikoya community. We want to reach out to the young people who trade around the church premise. We want to reach out to youth. And then also want to reach out to a particular community that has been recommended to us to reach out to. And for these various levels of outreaches, we want to preach Christ. We want to also render material support at different levels. So we have uh, quite some resources provided by the 11 responses towards the indigent empowerment but we feel we can do more than what we currently have so we challenge and we appeal to every member of the church help to join this bandwagon to do the needful and collectively like you said where people will represent us to handle the, i mean to coordinate the various outreaches we want to conduct in this period and do the empowerment as promised. So we're really looking forward to hear from you. Let us get additional resources from us towards this laudable initiative. And the Lord will bless us in Jesus' name. From next Sunday, being the first Sunday of September, we're going to have a slight shift in our services. We retain the form of two services, but we adjust the content of the two services. The first service from next Sunday will start from 8.30 but get on till 10. So 90 minutes as against average of 75 minutes we currently have. And then second service will be from 10.15 till about 11.45. So please take note of this and um, let us um, abide by these adjustments. Lastly, we'd like to appeal to us on the importance of inviting. We have two platforms for every, whereby every member of the church can invite people to church. You can invite people to the physical congregating we have like we have here this morning you can also invite people to join us on our online portals on Sunday and Wednesday and if some people so desire our Zoom meet prayer meetings prevail as place Saturday morning from 6.30 to 7.30 I want to challenge if you're a member of this church 
and you respond to the authority provided in the house under God, I want to challenge us. Let us invite people. Let's use this season as we get into the ember months. Take it as a personal responsibility, a personal initiative. You can imagine if each of us invites one person on the average per month and get the person connected and get the person um, to become a member. It will be awesome by the end of the year. So we appeal to us. Let us respond to this and the Lord will bless us in Jesus' name. And the Lord will bless us in Jesus' name. Shall we all rise to our feet to close the service? Remember from next Sunday, first service 8.30 to 10, second service 10.15 to 11.45. Shall we have the benediction together? Hebrews chapter 13 from verse 20 to verse 21. Now may the God of peace who brought up our Lord Jesus from the dead, that great shepherd of the sheep, through the blood of the everlasting covenant, make me complete in every good work to do his will, walking in me what is well-pleasing in his sight, through Jesus Christ, to whom be glory forever and ever. And the people of God say, God bless you, cause his face to shine upon you, the Lord be gracious to you, the Lord cause the light of his countenance to be upon you continually, and the Lord grant you peace on every side, in the mighty name of Jesus. Amen.